all, Paul Roberts here with Video Fishing Journal 35. This one is a follow-up to Journal 34, in fact, shot the very next day. Uh, with low water we're having, the behavioral patterns are expected to follow what we saw in Journal 34. Uh, a loss of available habitat, both vegetative cover, with that we die back, uh, and water depth, with water levels falling causing the consolidation of prey and predators, which can be a recipe for aggressive feeding by larger predators like uh, the bass that we're going to be after. Same conditions that made our bass super aggressive, but this time on a pond with a different uh, and more challenging layout uh, in terms of, of the fishing and, and uh, apparently in uh, the bass getting fed. Now, I fished two ponds. Uh, but we'll pretty much only show one here because uh, both showed similar behaviors, uh, namely spooky and, and picky fish, okay? Uh, and, and the second pond is where I solved the day's challenges. Those challenges didn't simply have to do with finding the fish, okay? That was, once again, easy enough, uh, but in their response to lures. Uh, this the, the game that uh, all small water and, and bank anglers often uh, have to play. You may have heard the saying, if I can find them, I can catch them. Uh, well, there's nothing like confidence going in, but the fish and the conditions and circumstances they're under have a lot to say about that. I've often said, come to say, that if we could see what's going on under that water around our lures, we might just hang this fishing thing up altogether. Lures are most simply not prey. The majority of the time, lures need to do something special in order to get fish to mistake them for prey. In other words, when we catch a fish, that fish made a perceptual mistake. A big part of effective lure presentation is making that happen. And that's what this video fishing journal illustrates or at least provides an introduction to, to something that lies at the core of effective lure presentation. Okay, this is a mid-fall outing uh, with water temperatures hovering right around the 60 degree Fahrenheit mark, uh, with little surface heating now uh, being this late in the season, uh, the sun angle uh, too low and uh, the, the days short. Vegetation has decayed greatly by now, a process that began with decreasing photo period back in late August. Water levels are at the lowest for the year due to uh, evaporation over the summer, and this year especially due to lack of precipitation. In fact, we're in drought conditions this year, resulting in very low water uh, in some of our ponds. In today's pond, the water level is down uh, roughly three feet due to those drought conditions. It's now essentially, of, uh, being a shallow pond to begin with, it's now a, a pretty much a shallow, expansive flat, um, but the majority of it less than three feet deep. The deepest areas are only about a foot deeper, at about four feet. The pond is dishpan contoured, okay, with gradual depth change, and no small, confined, deep spots. Uh, to speak of, as we'd seen and, and taken advantage of in the Journal 34 pond. Uh, our pond also lacks hardcover, which in our Journal 34 pond served as uh, what were called spots on the spot that clued us into exactly where to concentrate our casts. The mature bass are in the slightly deeper areas, as we saw in our Journal 34 pond too. But Unlike in the, that, uh, the previous pond, the Journal 34 pond, these deeper areas are not small and confined. Instead of a fish in a barrel kind of situation, this is more like uh, a fish in a small parking lot. Okay, So the fish are not so tightly consolidated. The generally open water of the pond's basin had the bluegill, with, with virtually, with very little cover, uh, had those bluegills pressed up onto the shallow, uh, gradually slo sloping shorelines for protection from marauding bass that were holding just beyond. Sounds like a recipe for carnage, doesn't it? The bass were indeed in hunting mode, uh, taking advantage of the exposed prey, but were highly spooky in that super shallow and clear water. Fish were spooked by 
uh, my approach, uh, the lure in the air, uh, the splashdown too close, uh, line moving in the air on the cast, um, even line held up off the water. Apparently, the motion of that, that mono leader above the water uh, alarmed fish. Since the bass were aggressive and looking for prey, I started with a um, imitative feeding style presentation. Uh, bluegill-esque swim jigs and uh, small paddle tail swim baits. To cover those small parking lot sized areas, uh, I ended up fan casting and using a horizontal retrieve, just, you know, covering water. But those straight horizontal retrieves, not surprisingly, were largely ignored by the bass. Uh, something that's most often the default response by bass in general. Uh, again, um, if we were to look underwater and watch what's going on with our lures and fish, a lot of the time um, it can be really disheartening. Once again, lures have to do something special to dupe fish. The bass in this pond were not only spooky, but unconvinced that these lures I was throwing were actually prey in that super shallow, clear water, um, evidenced by follows, uh, rejections, where they'd turn away, um, and, and short strikes. Uh, and that got maddening. <sighs> oh. All right. Oh, juicy, that was a good bass. How did I miss him? I hit before, well, I, I felt some weight there, buddy. How is it? Oh, I've never hit him hit my lines before. How is it that you can't hook a single fish with any rod or lure combination? There's one. Upon such close inspection, the bass simply did not see those lures as, as prey. Finally, after giving those first lure choices an ample shot, and, and, and lures that usually, under uh, more normal conditions, better conditions, uh, do the trick, I ended up going back through the same spots with the spinnerbait, taking advantage of what's called an ambush point. An ambush point is something uh, that I'll, I'll cover more completely in a future video uh, dedicated to the subject because it's such a critical and fascinating topic. Uh, but I'll introduce the idea here as it plays such a key role as to why those bass were so vulnerable to a certain presentation. Uh, and because this one is, <laughs> this ambush point is such a straightforward um, and easy to see example. Once again, Lures are not prey, and this can be obvious to the fish, especially under high visibility conditions and in certain structural layouts. Thus, in our fishing, the strikes we do get come from fish that were duped or triggered into making a mistake. Lures fished simply chuck and wind, cast and retrieve, chuck and wind, cast and retrieve, most often fail to draw strikes. Lures traveling through open water where the fish can observe them for some distance are sure to give off inappropriate cues. Quite simply, lures look pretty stupid most of the time. Okay? Lures need to do something special to draw committed strikes. In today's case, the imitative feeding type lures, uh, the swim jig and, and uh, uh, swim bait that I, I tried, uh, and, and again, often work when bass are aggressively targeting prey fishes, essentially failed to draw committed strikes. So uh, I sort of cheated, going to a spinnerbait and taking advantage of the water surface film. Okay, an excellent ambush point. The surface film acts as an ambush point by breaking up the lures off-putting visual cues, not letting them get a good, good bead on it. Uh, visually. Uh, at the trigger being both that attractive bulging wake that I, that I made um, and uh, speed. And those same uh, picky behests turned into committed biters like that. It wasn't the spinnerbait, okay? Instead, it was what the spinnerbait did. Okay, one other thing. Uh, note the difference in body condition of these bass today compared to those from Journal 34, uh, Journal 34 Pond. 
the one that was uh, much more consolidated and had real tight consolidated areas for prey and predators to uh, pile into. I- I'm guessing that, okay, that uh, the bass today appear to be working harder for their food than the bass in the Journal 34 pond that or offered that you know much more consolidated layout. One might think that you know a, a more wide open uh, layout uh, where prey can be a little more difficult to catch might make uh, the bass all the more ravenous. Uh, but it also, just as likely, likely uh, may make them more cautious and circumspect in determining which targets are worth committing to. Remember, there is um, um, a, an energetic balancing act here that basically rules the show for fish, and especially mature fish who have figured this out. Oh, one more thing. If you like the content here on The Nature of Fishing, find value in it, consider supporting me, uh, us really, either through our Patreon page or through PayPal. Uh, Links provided in in the description. Thanks in advance, and your grandchildren will thank you. (laughs) Okay, enough background, uh, enough business, let's hit the water. Okay, we got fish pushed up onto the shoreline here. A lot of bluegills pushed in shallow, and there's a reason for that. There's one. Oh, I let her go. Oh, boy, did she smack it. Oh, there's a big wake. They're laying right out there. There's a movement right there, a big wake. The shoreline is full of bluegills. And there's gonna be a bunch of bass. Just spooked the bass out. My lure spooked the bass out. (sighs) Hmm. That one was laying in wait for bluegills. Whoa, I got freaking pounded. <laughs> oh. It's not that big a fish, but boy, did it hit hard. My gosh. Okay, honey. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. There go some bluegills out of the shallows again. dark and yes you've got the fall belly but you're not in quite as good a shape as those other ones were I forgot to check your belly your throat go to the other pothole because this one isn't really cranking. No, it's not. Don't know why. I thought it was all there, but...
Okay, that won't go the bass that was laying out the side of the bluegills. See if I can do this without spooking them. Ooh, I just heard a crash. Yeah, the hunting is going on. Is this thing looking enough like a bluegill? Sufficient. Oh, I lost him again. Let's check your point. Point's good. I'm definitely throwing over bass. Yep, and they don't seem to be all that hot on this jig. Hmm. 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 Let's keep looking. I know there's fish here. That looks like a bass. Lure in the air spooked him. There's one. That's three out of four I've missed. What's going on? All right, here we are again. Okay, just that cast just spooked fish out. Look at all those bluegills boogie. Yep. Oh. So that fish did not take the hook. That fish held on to the lure and ran with it. I don't think it was a big fish or whoa. Here comes somebody. Nope, this one turned away. Hmm, line touching the water or hanging over the water spooked him. Look at this. These are bass. All right. Let's give them something that they might be willing to chew on. Because the swim jig ain't it. There's a bunch of bluegills and a bunch of bass here. Pretty good. Get that line off the water. There's one. Ah. Geez, there's no water out there. Inside. OK. 
Come on out of there. All right. What is that in there? Nope, nothing, just vegetation. All right. <laughs> Hiding in there, are you? I can feel you. I can feel you. There you are. <laughs> Go that way. Go that way, buddy. There he goes. All right. That was awesome. That fish hooked himself. All right, here goes. Let's try this again. There is a fish out there. This has got a great little head shake. Whoop, your line hanging over that fish spooked him. Did you see that? They saw it, they saw it. Yeah, wow. They are so spooky. They are so spooky. Holy moly. These are Super aggressive fish. They're chasing, but man, they're. <sighs> Let's get that spinner bait going. Okay. Take your word for it. <sighs> There's one. Intercepted it. Oh. Off the surface. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a good fish, too. Nothing in the throat. Awfully pretty fish though. October belly. Get this out of the way. Beautiful, beautiful fish. 16 plus. Got a nice surface ripple. Let's take advantage of it. That one was right up in position to kill the bluegills that are in shallow. They seem to want some speed. Some action. Maxilla there. 
nothing in the gut. It's a little off. It's right on now. Oh, there's one little tiny guy. I can shake him, maybe. Wow. Dude. Well, I can try it with a flat surface. It's certainly dark enough. Whoa, I got cracked out there right away. Oh. Wow, there were several together too, I saw them. And there's one here, spooking them I am. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Nothing in the stomach, and away you go. I just don't want the lure to land on them. Spook them. Here he comes. Got him. Oh man, it just depends on where the lure lands in relation to the fish. It either spooks them or there's a thin fish. Not doing so great. Bluegills are running you ragged, are they? Whoa! <laughs> that fish was just holding close by, I think. It just was set up. Come on. <clears throat> Thirteener. <sighs> Adios. catch up to him. This one came from shore. Away you go, little fella. 